Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, hello, hello, everybody. Today is, really, Friday the 13th of September. Okay, and John is not here, and he's not on the that ride either. This is going to be um, our uh, pre-conference meeting right here on the ride, just going like crazy. Anyway, no, I got that just to to say that's that that's probably going to be our uh, keynote talk. Everybody got to be there screaming their heads off. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. Welcome to Clarion Live weekly webinar. See it, learn it, and share it. This is number 531. And the pre-conference webinar. So you won't see us for two more weeks after this. Okay. Today is September 13th, like I said, clarion date 79882. And you can see the recordings at clarionlive.com download them and Skype is available as you know. If you don't know what the Skype link is, ask somebody. Okay, um, let me just move on. My my, I'm the only one here. Hi, I'm Arnold. Hi, I'm, I'm oh, Bruce, Bruce is here, okay. <laughs> the clock ticked over, I was busy, but I just, I just got in. I'm, I'm actually not here for that long, to be fair. I'm okay. Just pop the okay. And so. Hi to Andy and to you and to yeah. Yeah, and there's yeah. John starting his beard. You see, it, it the nubs are there. It's coming yeah, out. Yeah, he's got a long way to go there. You know, he's just, he's just yeah. yeah. yeah but he's a fast grower. So mine, mm -hmm. mine, I started like years ago, and that's still not there. Okay. Uh, all attendees are muted. Questions, type it in the, the box and we'll either read it or we'll point to you and hopefully you have a mic and we can ask you to ask your questions directly. Uh, let's see. So raise your hand if you really want to do the talking. Okay. This space was left intensely blank because I don't have any rules except see you next week. But if you don't have rules, Arnold, you can't break the rules. Yeah, we have no rules. No rules. Moving on. Oops. Got to go back. Back. Okay. Um, what's happening today? Andy Walton with his new toys, whatever they are. He's here with us today, and it's a precursor of the conference. And uh, announcements, things you should know. Here we go. Uh, no webinar next two weeks, like I said earlier, and October 4th, we're going to have a CIDC wrap up um, with a panel. Okay. Anything you want to add to this? No. Nope. Boom. <laughs> no, God. Here we go. Okay. Cl click. What's happening? Okay. Let's hit space. Whoa. Like everything just went to hell. <laughs> You see, this is why John makes the big bucks, him. Hey? Yeah, he makes the big bucks, and you know what? Um, hey. I'm going to give it back to him. Hey. There we go. Well, it's not like it should be, but we'll just keep going. So um, you guys can see all this, right? So let's we make can, that can. maximum. Okay. And... F11. No? Yes. I don't know. This thing with F11. Oh, jeez, whatever. Uh, this is really messed up. Yeah, I blame Andy. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we We're go. wrapping up now. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay. There we go. Noyantis, what happened on Monday? Anything? Um, we answered a very quick question of John's regarding uh, efficiently loading the calendar. Uh, which was a very quick question, a very quick answer, which was nice. And then we spoke about Reg Free Com, um, and we got quite in depth uh, what should have been a very simple setup, uh, which it is. It's 
couple of ticks and literally a couple of checkbox ticks and uh, the manifest were all generated for you. But we actually found a bug in Clarion, I think it was Clarion 10, might be Clarion 11, no. which needs to be reported. Really? To I, I find that hard to believe, Andy, hard to believe. <laughs> no. So, yeah, so I thought they were clean. It's got okay. to be. It's got to have a. That's going to be a, a chat with Bob next week. But uh, it's, if you've got, it seems if you've got. I think it was uh, on your manifest tab on the themed menus. I think it's something like that. Uh, then there's a couple of settings. It stops the Reg Free Com from working, which the two are, should be unrelated. So uh, there's a there's a blatant bug. We got the person working. It was great, but um, yeah, it does need reporting so that they can correct it going forward. It's, to be fair, that's the only time we've ever actually had an issue. Um, I'm sure they'll sort it. That's no, no, no great biggie. And even if you use those settings, there's workarounds for it, which we found, which was nice. But uh, a little alarming. It did. Uh, it threw the curveball for a good hour or so. Oh, at least you had uh, content. Okay. Um, open webinar. Were you there, Bruce? I was there. I don't think we had too many questions. There was only a couple of little questions. Uh, okay, that sounds good. They can go watch the webinar. I think so. <laughs> okay. How, how about Net Talk on Thursday? Anything? Yes, in? there was there was one on Thursday, episode two hundred and fifty one. Whoa! We're closing, we're closing on our, our episode two fifty six, which will be our, you know, our, our eight eight one bits day. So that's coming up soon, but uh, yeah, we spoke about CIDC and um, there was a question about how to log in to CIDC. So for those of you who are coming to CIDC and um, either you're online or on site, makes no difference, you should have your login already. Uh, you will need to log in to get access to the streams if you're watching online. Your login is the email address that you registered with and your password. You did get your password in a mail when you registered. However, assuming like some have forgotten that password, there is a little button there that says reset my password. So click on that, be patient, wait a couple of minutes, the mail will arrive with your new password. So that's that's for the CIDC site. You need to perhaps log in and make sure all that's working between now and next week. Next next week, Monday. You got you got ten days. Uh, make sure all that's working because on the Monday of the event, Arnold John, very busy, not gonna have time to answer questions and so on. So yeah, we covered that. Uh, we looked at a few other things. We did a really good intro to the NetWeb form and the layout, all the layout options on a NetWeb form. So if you've always wondered how to lay out stuff on a form, uh, then do go and check out that that is uploaded in the uh, on, on our website, on the Capesoft website. Um, yeah, a couple other little That's things, good. but that was, that was the highlights. Well, I'm looking forward to um, uh, two Mondays from now. And I am Tuesday. too. Yeah. And two Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. I am so, um, so amped. Amped. I start, I start flying on Wednesday. Yeah, you know, flying. we can almost say it's almost less than a week. Almost. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. Lots to do yet. Okay. So that was Net Talk. And, oh, next week. No, it's not quite next week. It's the week after. So, see it you is there. The, see you there. Yeah, it's the week after. Yeah. But um, I travel next week as does do a bunch of people. So. Yep. Okay, clicking on. Oh, come on. Seriously. Okay, spacebar. Okay, feature presentation. Let's give it off to... Um, Me? Yeah, I'm looking for your name. Oh, you're on the top. Okay, yes. Okay. okay. Let me... Thank you. My machine's been acting up, so that's kind of crazy. Delays and then pops. Okay. Okay. Um, I suppose here we go. Uh, this could. I mute. think I'm going to mute myself right now and uh, have a good time. <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna oh, wait, 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 wait. Let, let's let's make sure we don't have any um, uh, questions. Oh, you hey, do Bruce, actually. We do. There, there's one for you, and can you just take care of that one? Dan yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've answered Dan. Okay. Um, I've sent him a mail, and um, Carl, Carl says, "Is anyone 
going to Disney on the 21st or 22nd? Um, I'm sure there are people going in. I know we're, we're doing something that weekend. Um, if you're around, give us a shot. Um, Get on Skype be... and just ask people. Yeah, just just ask around. We I think we're park hopping, but you welcome to join us. I I don't know what I I just tagging along with what's happening, but um, yeah, I mean there's there's usually guys in the foyer early on those days. You just get together with whoever's there and go do some park hopping or whatever whatever you do. Some some guys I know are going to uh, Cape Canaveral on Sunday. Um, Sean Hennessy was talking about doing that. So um, yeah. Just uh, just just mail mail people or ask in the Skype chats and do stuff there. And, and and if you want to know who is attending, go to the website and go to who's coming, and the list is there, right? And um, you, you'll see online people. They will not be there, okay? Just look at the Orlando ones for training. So they'll be there the first two days at least, and um, and then the conference people also but they may be in both so look there and you should see names if you recognize them get in touch good times there you go. yep. okay there you go sorry about that good. Andy. Okay, okay, Andy. Andy. <laughs> okay okay no problem okay well um yeah we're going to cover just some uh, recent updates and forthcoming updates um to the uh, to a, a couple of our products um it, it really could be a short-lived uh, webinar, which is good. It'll be an early finish. Uh, but let's have a, let's take a look. So we're going to start with uh, one of the products which has had quite a lot of uh, love of late and is still getting some uh, some changes. Anyone who's going to be attending the training, um, either in person or online, I would recommend you um, bring your plans up to date if you're not up to date uh, to make sure it's fair for everybody uh, we we're running a, an amnesty I'll, I'll show you how to get the uh, the amnesty uh, shortly so if anyone's out of date and they think oh I, I, I want to use the new facilities then you know bring your bring your plans up to date at no penalty and so on and so forth and uh, and for those who do keep active we're running a 10% discount on on those uh, so to give them an incentive as well so it tries to keep it fair for everybody but it's not a sales plug. The main thing is, if you're going to be wanting to do all this training on the on the new stuff, um, then you know you need the new toys, you need the new templates. So it's, it's quite simple. Okay, so to let's let's show you one of the things we're going to cover, and we're actually going to cover how to do it today. It's not in the, the greatest of detail. The training will cover more, but let's just take one quick look. I'm just trying to see if I can find it. Not that one, and not that one. Um. Won't be one second, just looking for the folders. Okay, let's go to this one. And what we're going to cover is basically some of the uh, the updates to the um, the report control and linking it directly with charting. So you could have your uh, report control, which is a terrible name, by the way. We know it's a list, but we can have a list like so. Uh, you can group your data. And you can plot the uh, plot it directly to uh, the chart pro. So you can you can do these facilities, get all the grouping so we can see our data. Uh, here we've got some sales for September, uh, 3,880, which is made up of some for the BBC, some for Clarion Magazine, some for Exantis, some for Noyantis. And these totals are automatically just generated for us. So we can see here we've got the new totals. Let's just bring that so we can actually see the figures. So now we can see it totaling. So basically, imagine it's a bit like a, a pivot table. Um, so, and all of this, what we're showing here, is done without writing one line of code. So it might look really complicated, and you think, I'm never going to be able to achieve it. You will. We don't write one line of code to do this. So, um, and we can we can filter. So these are for, for you know, anybody who's not kept up to date, as in its functionality, its capabilities of the report control, Oh, you know, this might just uh, give you a, a taste of what's been added. Um, I'd say, well, more recently, let's let's say the in the last year, something like that. Um, so it is getting quite powerful. So we can display a filter. We we'll look at this this row up here, and you can change the colour of that, of course. But we could do a filter and say, okay, we want that, but we know it only occurred on 
and let's say I can see one of the dates there, um, the 1st of the 9th, 2019. Okay, and now our totals are accordingly and our, our chart is updated automatically. And let's get rid of that. Regenerated and so on and so forth. Or maybe a better idea is maybe if we show that filter again and say, okay, let's show me the ones with uh, BB in there. They have BBC. We could have filtered though. And the chart again, automatically upgraded. So you've got your group totals, you've got so you've got your grand totals, you've got your group totals and so on. So we're going to start with, let's start with creating, creating that. So we're going to start with literally a, an empty example. We'll go into here. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have the other Clarion open on the other window. Won't be one second. It'll just save me uh, and make it nice and easy when I'm doing the steps. Okay, so we're going, we want to, this isn't exactly rocket science, we're going to add a button and we're going to create a procedure. So let's, uh, sorry, I'm just moving some controls on, our, on the other window, which is just going to be in the way. Okay, so let's, let's have a look at this. Create a button. And we'll call this one uh, grand totals. And I think you're going to guess it. This is going to, uh, we're going to calculate our grand totals on here. Um, grand totals, fully enough. Nice and simple. We'll have a window. <coughs> Yeah, something like so should be big enough. <coughs> just excuse me, I've got niggling cough, which is uh, just coming in time for the DevCon, which is great. And a close button. So that just basically preparing our window, if you will. A, a pint would take care of that one, eh, Andy? <laughs> cough. Quite possible. Medicinal. Okay. It's going to come with a more polished example anyway. So, okay. So we've got, let's just make sure we can compile. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't want to. And our center, where well, I want it, yeah. For just dis display purposes. Brilliant, okay. Um, so we start with, funnily enough, the report control. Gonna watch you don't go too fast or it really will be a fast webinar this. So it won't, won't be a second, just waiting for the other screen. Okay, so I've already added the global extension, uh, so that the, the report control will now appear in our list of available controls. So I'm going to choose that, put it on our window, about so big, yeah, looks fine. Um, Force of habit, but I always like to change the uh, the class name so I know um, what I'm working with. Oh wow, that's uh, don't ask go to webinar slowing that down. Uh, one little announcement you'll see straight away, and that is we can give our report controls names, which means when they appear in the extension tree, we can see the name. The simplest of enhancements, but from a functionality and a usability point of view, does make the world a difference especially if you've got a window with multiple report controls linked together. So it really does come in handy. So we're going to base this one on a table called transaction header or trans header. Okay. Oh, 
just okie dokie. Uh, so it's initially it's data source. Now, one of the new things, historically, you would have had manually loaded, which you would have uh, done yourself via the add row and add child row and so on and so forth. Um, and you had a queue and you had uh, the data bind. So you can bind it directly to a, an ADO data source and, and bypass by, bypass Clarion dictionary and uh, bypass Clarion really um, all together and all the file drivers literally just straight on top of the ADO. But we're not, we're going to use one of the new functions and it's where it's reading the tables from a, the, the records from a, a view or a, 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 basically a file. So we're going to say what primary table is it and we want it to be our uh, transaction header. Uh, we can give it a key if we want to go through in a particular order <clears throat> and sometimes and there, and there will be if we're going to put filters and range limits on there and so on you, you probably would want to do that for example here today <laughs> there's, there's not that many records so you know it's um yeah it's we're not going to bother because here's the key thing the report control what we want to do is it's all about getting the data into it once that data is in there we let that do all the processing and, uh, and take over all the workload. So let's get the data in there as fast as possible. Pointless saying we need to have a, a particular index to start with, because unless, like I say, we're, we're doing uh, uh, some range limits and so on and so forth. <clears throat> but um, the, 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 the key is let's get the data into the report control as fast as possible. And then the sorting and grouping and so on and so forth will be processed with the actual report control contents. So not via any queues in Clarion and anything like that, or reading in a particular order and rereading and so on. It's all going to be done at runtime within the control itself. So the and we when we allow the user to save and restore all the settings, so the user you might ship it in one particular order and the user might prefer it to be in a different order. And you let them save and restore that particular setting. So it's going, that is going to be resorted in the user's preference anyway and override your preference. So, you know, let the report control do the work. That's the, uh, that's the key I'm trying to get across. So we're going to say, okay, we do need a unique field and that's because every row needs to uh, have some kind of unique identifier. So we're going to just choose a, a, an auto incrementing header ID. Okay, okay. We can give it order. And there's an expression builder, which is again, that's a new, uh, a new update for anybody who's up to date and, and and uses the report control a lot. And it is one of our, definitely one of our more popular products. Uh, anybody who uses it a lot, you'll, that's a, a new expression builder which we just put in, and the same for the filter. Um, we've got some uh, some join tables, and we do want the join table here. We want to we want to have the customer. Okay, so we're going to. Uh, Going to join in the uh, customer table. <coughs> and we're going to say uh, our customer ID equals our transaction header. Yep. Sorry, transaction header customer ID. And it's an inner join. So um, that's going to build all of this is, is building our uh, view. Uh, our, our view structure, which is going to be used for basically getting the data, just like a, a Clarion ABC browse, if you will. Uh, not an ABC, but I should say a Clarion browse for that matter. Just like that, you're going to build the view, get and use that's going to that's going to be the portal between the actual raw records and uh, and the actual report control. <coughs> for this instance, just one second. Sorry about that. <coughs> Um, we're going to want some hot fields, which again, very similar to the Clarion, uh, uh, Clarion browse, if you will. And we're going to need that um, transaction header customer ID, which we've just used, which we've just used in the join, that is, I should say. Okie dokie. Now, one extra settings you've got, sorry, one, one other new uh, entity that you've got here. Oh, I've got a question here, so, and I think it's quite prevalent while we're just on. Do the join table, tables need to be defined in the dictionary? No, Paul. No, nope, they can be, um, uh, they, they are by definition uh, custom joins. Um, let's go back to that join. Uh, 
So yes, they are they are basically custom joins. I might add the facility where it gets it from the dictionary and so on and so forth, like a Clarion browse would, and it gives you the the ability to choose between the predefined joins and the and the custom joins. But at the moment, they are all custom joins. Um, so the, the answer is um, no, they don't have to be predefined. You can just uh, create them on the fly. So in fact, I don't think in this uh, dictionary that is a, a predefined. Uh, um, relationship okay um now uh, and that's hot fields which are hot fields are, we can imagine just regular hot fields if you will <laughs> related record so this is a, a new tab relatively new probably like I say definitely in the last last few months if you will and what uh the related record is is you've got this report control so i'm just going to run I'm going to run uh, our normal example just to, uh, to to show you this, if you will. Yeah, that's a good one to, to do. Okay. So we've got this uh, report control. Now that happens to be off a of view, probably. Um, it, but it, the point is, it doesn't have to be. It could be a manually loaded. That's probably a better example. Let's go to here. That's just a manually loaded report control. That data might have uh, come from a, a big SQL select statement where you, you, you're bringing it from various different tables and, and so on and so forth, driven via one core table, of course. Uh, but, but basically, the point is you've you've got this information, could have read, read from maybe an import, a CSV or whatever, doesn't really matter. You've got some content in the report control. And when the person clicks around the report control, you know that the, 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 the core information, it might be, might be joined to it and so on and so forth, but the core information needs to relate back to at least one table and one that you really want to keep in sync. So imagine it's a Clarion browse and as you're clicking around the view, you've only got certain uh, fields defined in the view, uh, 10, 10 columns in the table and you've only, you've only specified four of them via, the, uh, via the, the, the content and the hot fields. So in the buffer, only them four fields would be populated and the other six would be empty. Well, the related record goes and gets you the, as it says on the tin, the, the related information, the related record to what you're clicking on. It's the core one. You might want to do others as well, um, but it will at least get you the, the core record. So, for example, in, a, in that view, we, we've got, this is off a, a, a customer table and we've only got these fields. So the first line of the address is in the buffer. But yet when I click here, the whole of the address is displayed. And that's because the related record function is kicking in. We said, as I click around here, I only want to go and get the record when I'm on there. So you've got the best of both worlds. Okay. Uh, I'm monitoring the question. So anybody, feel free to just jump in at any time if you've got a question. So on. Okay, let's take that out of the way. Chance that we will keep coming back to, to that for... Uh, points of uh, note. Hey, Andy. Mm. Um, Paul McFarren has a question. Let me see if I can open his mic, huh? Yeah, Paul, I think Paul, we'll just Paul, let's it. see what? if you have a mic. Hey, Paul. Uh, Paul, do you have a headset or mic or? What? Coming to a webinar, please. Paul, no? I think okay. the question was related to the relationships, and we uh, we have just answered it. So uh, yeah, it's just. Oh, okay. So we can clear this up. Okay, sorry. Yeah. No, no problem. I am monitoring it on the other monitor, on the other screen. So. Oh, super, super. I was looking away, then I looked there and go, oh no. <laughs> so. Go. So this is where we would do the related record. Uh, so if the um, if we won't change the data source, but let's say it was directly onto an ADO data source, a data bind. Um, you wouldn't get the first few tabs, but you will still get the related record. That definitely gives you the best of both worlds. You can have the speed of loading the data directly to the uh, the ADO engine, and, and the data goes straight into your list. But uh, you've got a you, you've got the Clarion dictionary as well. So when you click on the record, you get uh, you, you, you get the related record found for you automatically. No no coding required. We're going to want that, so I'm going to say okay. Or the transaction header. Uh, I'm going to use a particular key, which is just a header. There might be multiple parts to your key. If there is, you can specify them all here. We've only got one. 
and the information it's going to be based upon is the row that we've selected because that's the uh, the unique value we're loading for our uh, for our rows uh, but if you had multiple sections then you could it could be a column id a row id or another and you can go and specify what the what the value is as is nice and simple an auto uh, auto incrementing field um, I'll be honest, I added this, I think it was to do with where we were binding to SQL and so on, and we wanted to know what the unique field was, uh, sorry, the uh, the ADO data bind. I wanted to know what that unique field was within the um, uh, within the um, results. So we just re-specify the, uh, the unique field there. Uh, and do you want to display after the row selection? So back to that example, as I'm clicking around, we have got a display, so it means I can see the address. Okay. okay. Um, next, these settings, they are the same as we've uh, we've had. Um, so nothing really there, nothing new there to, uh, to report. Not yet anyway, we'll show a couple in a second. So let's go to our content and we're gonna put our columns in there. So our columns now, we're going to just pick them straight from our uh, from our table. So we're going to have our transaction number and I would say 60. I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll, we'll take a guess at some of these. I'm going to choose our date. Okay, okay. Now, interesting. <clears throat> what you've got here, I'm going to bring that other thing back into view. Oh, no, not that one. That's probably a bad example. No. Okay. But what I wanted to mention there is in the dictionary, that's defined as a clarion table, a TPS table, and they are uh, date fields. So ultimately, they are numeric and but they have a picture and the picture is uh, at d17 something like that what the template will do because we said okay this is a, a file column a sorry a, a table column and so is that for that matter it picks up the picture from the dictionary so what you display at runtime will be the formatted data automatically you won't have to do any formatting so the dictionary is the is the key uh, behind this you can override, and I will show you how to do some overriding, but um, yeah, we basically you don't need to. I'm trying to do as, as the least amount of coding here to show uh, some of the simplicity. <clears throat> so we've got our customer. That's great. We will have um, the net, val net value. Now I've got to admit on this, I think I've left it, uh, I can't remember what I've done the alignment in the dictionary. So I'm going to override it. I'm going to say, I want that column to be aligned right. This table, as you've probably gathered, is very simple. It's going to be a, a, like a transaction header table. So, so we've got net, discount. Arnold, I'm not sure if it's you. I think you've got your microphone open. that worked <laughs> um, so here we go some tax uh, a total and an outstanding balance to the right just remember did I do the tax to the right no I didn't think I did But yeah, and uh, and a balance. <clears throat> okay. Right. Let's have a look at that. That's nice and simple. Let's let's take a look at that. We've not put any sorting or any, anything on there, and it's going to be read just in a, a very you know, simple sequential order. But let's have a look at what we've got. Still no code. That's the main thing I want to to show. Well, there we go. We've got uh, some transactions. We've got our um, 
the dates, as I say, formatted. We've got our, our values, so on and so forth. So yeah, so far, so good. Okay, now that's not the best of sort orders. Chances are the user might want them in with chronological date order reversing, or if it's more transactional, they might want the transaction number, uh, but again, descending. So let's give it that. Go back to our report control. Go across to our sorting. Again, there's a look up because it's the whole point of this now is it's still compatible. You can still type in, should you want, um, a column name, and it would take it as long as you've got the column defined, of course. So it's, it's free text if you wanted it to be, but you've also got the lookups. It just makes it so much easier. So we're going to say we want it in transaction, descending. And of course, remember that's your your default, but you're going to ship your application. But if the user um, <coughs> If the user has the save and restore settings turned on uh, and you provide that facility then those would be automatically applied and yours wouldn't be um, giving the user real good usability uh, uh, capability on the system i thought i said descending on that just let me check that again Uh, transaction header. Oh, no, not the header ID. Sorry, I want the number. Transaction number. Yeah, there we go. We happen to have some transactions. Okie dokie. So that's so far so good. Now, the whole point of this is we wanted to um, give it some, some some totals. So to do your totaling, this is new uh, for those who, uh, like I say, it's a popular product for those who uh, who use it quite, um, quite a lot. Um, we, on our appearance, we want to go to our head and the footers and we want to display a footer because it's kind of the obvious place to do your totaling. So we're going to display a footer and we're going to go to our columns and we're just going to choose we're in the columns on the options that we want to total so you can see uh, there's been a slight rejig of the options here and a bit more to try and help you out um, basically some, some more descriptions if you will to try and help you out on the second page we've got to uh, display a grand total so we'll say yes we could put a picture on not necessarily going to need to. I'm going to show a, a, a mixture of both uh, purposely. So no picture, we'll just leave it, which means the picture from uh, the dictionary will take precedence. So onto this column, we want to total on that. <coughs> we want to total on that one. And on there, and last but not least, we'll have one on there. But we will give it a picture. So we'll override the picture and we're going to say, okay, uh, at N, uh, we'll put the dollar in there, even though it should be pound sterling, but uh, we'll put the, the dollar in there. Um, and so that's our picture. And, it, and we've got a little tip to tell us it's a clarion picture that we want. Okay, now it's taking shape. Now we've got our totals worked out for us. Really, uh, uh, at that point, you've kind of, we've got what we want. We've got it in transaction number order by default, which is what we were after. Um, and yeah, we've got our, uh, we've got our data loaded. So now we can, let's add a couple of the new options, uh, newish again, when I say new, I'm, I'm thinking in the last year. So some of some of you will actually already be using these because um, we're going to copy this to other procedures. Uh, so we're going to put a bit more uh, meat on this, if you will. We've got a report control on the screen. So now when you've got a report control, you've got extra options available to you. <coughs> um, interesting. Some of the things you've got, uh, we're going to use the inline filtering, but just as you've got, again, the whole point of this, I'll be honest, is to 
replace a clarion browse. You can enhance a clarion browse, it supports it and, and so on. So it will take all its settings from the, uh, the clarion browse. So you can use a browse enhancer um, and that's, that's fine. There's, there are limitations, you know, I won't lie to you, there, there's limitations on it and so on. And there's extra workload because ultimately a clarion browse is being initialized and uh, loaded and so on. And then the report control is being loaded over the top of that. So it's a lot more you know, using more memory, it's 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 going to be slower because you're maintaining, technically you're maintaining two browsers, a Clarion browser and a, a code jot list. So, it, but you can enhance the Clarion browse, but the, the, the intention of what I'm demonstrating today is we're not using the Clarion browse, we're kind of, I, I never use it, I haven't used it for such a long time. Um, so what I was going to mention here is just as you would have a Clarion browse, you would have, let's say, uh, the browse no records button. We've got that. We've got our, if we can find it, uh, a record button. So that's a, the equivalent of a browse no records button. We can put it on there and we can say, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll put one on uh, just for demonstration. So let's just say it's a, a dependent button. There you go. Oops. Uh, oh. Maybe give it a bit more text. Make sure it's linked to the report control, which uh, there it is, because there's different report types uh, that you can do. You can enhance the Clarion list. Uh, the question yesterday for user, they want, they have big SQL queries and they bring always bring their uh, their results back into a queue. Um, so I said, well, you've got a couple of ways of doing that. You could put it into a Clarion list and then have the report control enhance the list automatically. It'll give you edit in place capabilities, so on and so forth, and all the sorting and all the facilities you're gonna to see today. Uh, or you could bypass that and go straight into the report control, which of course is better. But you could do a list if you wanted to. It really is quite flexible. Anyway, so that's a dependent button. We'll see that in action uh, shortly, but it's on there for now. We'll put it, let's put it over there. Uh, but the one, and you, oh, sorry, you've got the dependent, sorry, the equivalent of the dependent button. You would have insert, change, delete buttons. We've got them. So you've got your update buttons. So here's our loaded off a view, our example, what, what ships. And I can go to here. We can double click, just as you would with a standard Clarion browse. We can change that to one, two, three. And of course, that. But the beauty of that is it's only one record what's resynced. You're not going off rebrow, re resetting, and so on and so forth. It's quite, it really is quite efficient. Um, we can obviously change there. Um, insert does exactly as the Clarion one does, so it will do the auto, you know, the auto prime, and so on and so forth, and and then call the update form, and um, the delete obviously is just the same. The delete just does the delete. So you've got the uh, you've got the insert change delete buttons, just as you would with the Clarion, and you've got a um, the uh, a view button and a select button as well. So, and for those settings on your uh, report control, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, We've got, after the related record, we've got another tab saying the update procedure. So we can say we want to call a particular update procedure, pass it some parameters, wait for a return value as you would normally do. Um, an extra facility you've got is the Clarion, if you have a, an insert change delete in Clarion, you specify one update procedure. And that same procedure is used for viewing a record, which I've never liked because Chances are in the view, uh, it gets a, a global request to view record, um, but chances are you're going to hide some things or definitely disable some things because you're in view mode and so on and that kind of thing. So you can do that. If you press the view button and you've got a, a procedure named here, then it will call your standard update procedure, just like the Clarion one. But what you can do is, oh, and they've got the, the, the print works in the same manner, by the way, but we've got um, we've got the extra procedures. So you can say, there's a separate view procedure. So if you do specify that, when you're viewing a record, it will call that procedure rather than the standard insert change delete, rather than this, the standard update procedure. Gives you just a bit more flexibility, that's all. Uh, so they are some of the new settings on this, uh, on the data source tab.
We weren't going to use that. We're going to use our inline filters. So I'm going to bring in our inline filter and our uh, inline search. Okay, dokie. I do need to make sure that they are linked. Probably are, but I just want to make sure. No. Nope. Link to the report control. And let's have a compile. Well, first of all, in our template, we haven't actually got that turned on by default because we, we, we didn't want it to. So it comes under the options and you've got these inline controls. So uh, here they are, it's off by default. It's automatically going to build uh, a drop down list of options. So when it loads the data, it's going to find all the unique values for each column. If you've got uh, a word to the wise here, if you've got large data sets, I would turn that off because obviously passing the uh, passing the values is going to add a, a time overhead. So if you find it's a, a little slow on a very large data set we're talking here, then you know then 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 turn that off and you'll obviously get a speed increase. Um, it's got to get the the, the 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 unique values from somewhere, so it's got to calculate them. Um, so that's the search. Sorry, the filter. The same for the search. We will actually give it a different background color so we can just see. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to give it quite a garish color to purposely uh, make it stand out. So we're going to okay go with um, do, 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 like salmon. Maybe that's not too bad. Okay, so our our filter row when it's turned on is going to have that, and our search row when it's turned on is going to um, yeah. So it's a uh, row color. Uh, our search is going to yeah have a, a khaki color. Okay, let's see that in action. Okay, there's our, uh, our content. Display our filter. We've got our, uh, maybe it's not as garish as I thought actually. But the idea behind that is you, you know, if it was just white, then it could look similar to the you know, just a standard row with no data in it. And you would get a, a support call of, why have I got a phantom row and, and so on? Whereas if you give it some kind of uh, color and it could be a global setting, you know, um, uh, so the user could actually set that color themselves if they want and maybe just go with the standard white. But um, you, you basically, you give the ability to say, okay, in your training, and if you turn this on, you're gonna get this type of row or you can use the filtering. If you turn this on, you're gonna get this row for highlighting. Um, just giving you the ability to, to make it a little more user-friendly for the uh, the user. So I'm going to go in here. I think I've got it set to a contains. So I'm going to say, okay, BBC. Oh, have I not got BBC? Is it case sensitive? I must have case sensitive turned on by default because again, you can do the settings. You can say case sensitive, insensitive, uh, a contains, a starts with, and ends with um, all different uh, all different permutations should you want them. Okay. So now we have filtered our totals are obviously changed and um, have we got any more I don't know what data we've got that mustn't be for the uh, that mustn't be for the BBC that one is and now we really are quite defined okay so first of the fifth 2019 let's clear them and we'll clear that one as well and we'll we'll have our, our search which we said was uh, this yellow Again, we'll have that BBC. So now in our data set, the BBCs are highlighted. And I'm going to choose that first of the fifth. That's what I was going to type it. 2019. And let's have a look. And somewhere. When it first to the fifth. I wonder why I didn't set my type, but uh, maybe I wouldn't uh, press the enter. Um, but you can see, bingo, that's the exact record we're after. So it's a it's a it's a youth, a useful way of uh, you know the data is in there. You don't want to filter, It'll be, you still want to see the entire set, but you just want to highlight the ones that you're after. That kind of thing. So got a quick question there: Can the user use wildcards for the search filter? Um, <clears throat> no, no, not at present. Actually, I think that's been mentioned before. Um, 
actually I should be able to think about it maybe the match command or something like that so no no not, not at present um not saying we we won't do that but it's uh, it's not in there uh, yet let's say that <clears throat> okay uh what are we on crikey up to uh, uh 10 to the hour already um no other questions on on what we've seen there so far so hopefully it's pretty straightforward uh i was gonna do you know what? i was gonna keep uh, uh copying and going to another procedure but let's stick with that same procedure it's going to be easier the demo app you will get uh, a more uh, polished the one what's going to come with the procedure the the the, uh, the template you get a more polished uh, result obviously with uh, the separate uh, examples okay so what we want to do on that is i want to do these group totals which means i'm going to want to um, I'm just going to put some grouping on to start with. I'm going to say, okay, um, no caption. I'll just show you what, what what you can do. So we're going to group, and we're going to group by uh, by 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 customer. It's good as any. Okay, okay. Let's take a look at that. We just turn. We haven't turned totally on. We've just said group our data. Okay. Ah, but we haven't got grouping on. Yeah. We haven't got group totals on, but we haven't actually got the grouping facility turned on either. That's a bit uh, <laughs> an omission. Sorry. I'll never make a I'll never make a a, a demonstrator a salesperson. It's not my forte. Ah the wrong grouping sorry that's not that's me not watching what i'm doing back to the grouping actually and nobody pointed it out so none of you was watching either it's not that we we put the customer name in there so i want to group by the customer name of course because you, you want to group with what's in the physical content so i want to group by that okay now our data is is grouped. Uh, there's our uh, Van Cater de Mont, uh, the uh, BBC, yeah, Encourager, Exanti, just some demo data, so on and so forth. Okay, okay. <clears throat> well, where's the subtotals? I haven't turned the total in on. I just turned grouping on. Oh. Okay. Oh, the totals just the total. You already had that. You yeah, just, we put the, you the just turned on the grouping. On. Right on. So. Uh, just to really to show one step at a time. So we've got our grouping on. So let's now just give ourselves some uh, some totals. Back, back to mute then. <laughs> uh, onto our net, and we're going to do basically our numerics because it's easier. And we're going to say, okay, yep, we want um, that, that, that. You need a macro. <laughs> so now, one thing I will point out here is, um, do, 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 do. let's go to our grouping. It's put a format in for us by default, okay? Which, and I've put a tip on there because we put a Clarion picture in before because we're in charge of doing them totaling, but the grouping facility and the totaling, I should say, is built into the control itself which means it wants to use its own formatting which is uh, basically a typical c format so that's just saying that basically it wants the value to two decimal places uh, don't worry the code doc help does actually show you the uh, samples of them in case you're thinking what's that there are some samples there <clears throat> so now there's our totals we've got bbc and we've got our two three two four six and so on and so forth yep and, and so on and so forth all making our grand total up and if we was to do some filtering let's say uh, well we know we've got first to the fifth there's only one let's choose another one ah brilliant okay so now we can see for the uh, second of the fifth exante has got one of uh, 482 formula one's got 42 making a combined total 524 so and again no um no 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 keying no coding 
So, so why would you use a regular Clarion uh, browse if you get all this? I don't. I haven't used a Clarion browse for um, a while, if you want the truth. Mm. Yeah, because, um, don't see the point, this is faster to load. It, it, it is, obviously, it's equivalent to file loaded. Got to give that disclaimer out as well. You know, people mm -hmm. uh, might be jumping straight on. Just if you've got large data sets, I still use this, but put maybe some kind of some, some kind of filtering there to start with and say, I'll prompt them for, show me a date range, things like that. You know, use some kind of logical uh, constraint to it, uh, that kind of thing, because on the larger data sets, it's going to take longer to load. It's a one-time hit, though. You're going to get all this power, all the searching, grouping, so on and so forth, with it just in memory. You know, So it's going to be as fast as it can physically do it in the control itself. No clarion cues, no, no, no. You know, no sorting. No, no. Wow. <clears throat> There's a hidden queue behind the scenes which keeps track of the row IDs, the row objects, uh, technically, uh, and some other uh, bits and bats. <clears throat> but so is it pretty responsive to like uh, deletions or changes in the subtotals? Yes. Go boom. Okay. Yeah. Um, so did you check out the questions here? Oh, uh, um, we did, Bill. Uh, so we said about the wild cards, and I see Frank's just one. Can you do a search and filter by a date range? Of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there isn't a date lookup in 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 there, so you'd you'd have to. Oh, hmm. Ah, I know what you mean. You're like a between. Um, let me let me look one second, Frank, because I can't remember. I know it's <laughs> I know it's my template, but I work on. We've got about twenty five now or something like that. So let me just have a look because I can't remember what the actual options are. <clears throat> it's cost really bugging me. Okay, so we have a. And between, yes, you do. I think from memory, it's a pipe separator. So you would say like uh, um, 0101, 2019, uh, and in US format, you do it, you know, maybe 0202, there you go, that's US and UK. <laughs> so 0101, not 2019, pipe, 0202, 2019, that kind of thing. Uh, that, so. so you've got a, yes, you've got a between, it contains an evaluate, so you can put your own evaluate statements in there. Uh, you can do a list, I think that is comma separated. I'd have to check. Uh, oh, Bill, we have got a match. What the hell does that do? Uh, Bill, it might do a wild card. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it starts with and then ends with. So, um, okie dokie. And it's going to filter. You actually, you've got. Um, well, that's that gets a bit more uh, complicated. Um, attender, uh, uh, just leave it set to caption. If you want to know about the raw values, attend a Monday webinar. <laughs> so, okie dokie. Uh, obviously, it can be multilingual, so that all text, you might want it in French or German or Spanish and so on and so forth, so you could change that uh, for, your, for your own uh, language, uh, local language. Okay, so now, uh, back to that, we've got our totaling, and we can uh, group. And the beauty of this is, okay, we said, okay, that um, let's put a let's put a local um, field in there because I want to group it via some kind of period. And in our table, I'll tell you, I'm going to do this. Although I, I didn't need the extra fields, but I've got the date of the transaction, and there's a trigger which tells you the month and the year. I could have just done it locally, but I've just got the uh, the trigger doing for us. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to put a local column in. So off to our columns, not going to come out the view, not going to come out the table. It's just equivalent of a, a local field, if you will. Uh, so it's over to the columns and uh, I'm going to have it here. going to have a insert and I'm going to call it... Um, I call it LC, uh, just a little thing, local column. And I'm going to call it period. Period, give it 100. That'll do. Okay, so that's the local column, just defined. I, um, I don't want it shown in the actual list going across. Okay, so I'm going to hide it. So now we've got a column defined. Is uh, it's a, lo a local column, so we don't need to declare the variable. It, it, it will do it for us automatically. Okay, so we've got that. 
and I'm going to set to, I'm going to basically calculate a value in there. So just as you would in a Clarion ABC browser, let's say, you would have the set queue record. Well, in here, <coughs> we would have under our data set row set uh, set row content exactly the same. So we can go into here. Uh, here's some code I prepared earlier. Okay, so we've got our date month. I'm going to do an execute. The the loading to, for efficiency behind the scenes the loading is done via a group structure so when you uh, anybody who's familiar with the report control you can do the add row and then specify the set column uh, item set set column item i think it is or something like that for every particular item within that row or what you can do is set a um, a group structure populate its values and then add the row with that group structure and it will do it all in one hit saving you so much time and of course through efficiency we use that same mechanism so we create this structure for you um it picks up the name so let me just check i'm gonna yeah group report control yeah thank you uh so it's a group it's lc period and i'm just gonna set it to um, basically the year uh slash the month and put a uh, a more meaningful name on there, January, February, so on and so forth. So that here is the equivalent of set queue record. Okay, let's have a look. We haven't, remember we've hidden it, so it's there. So what I'm going to do by default, I'm not going to sort by the customer, I'm going to sort by that period by default. So go back to our sorting, sorry, group, not sort, and I'm going to group by uh, LC period because it's there it's defined I'm going to even going to have it as descending actually um, it's defined but it's just hidden the columns actually hidden let's run that okie dokie now we've got September August July June so basically just going chronologically backwards okie dokie so now we've got a, there's a local queue so <coughs> Um, and that means our totals are there. We think by this this period automatically calculated. Let's pull it in and group by the customer as well. And now we've got two sets of totals. And if you had a n over, let's say by date, then those totals are automatically calculated as well. So I think we knew we had something like uh, oh, let's actually have that date there. There you go, the second. So I know we had uh, some second of the fifth. Oh, they're 27 for the fourth, that's it. but it's just showed. So the grouping is entirely up to the user, uh, but the um, the data is, is basically, is, is just manipulated like a pivot table and displayed to them accordingly. So uh, really powerful, I think, giving that, you know, the ability for the user to see that straight away. So, and of course, coming straight onto that, what the chances are they will ask you is, that's great, uh, but I need, a, I need a print of that. So we go down to our controls and we've got our page set up, a uh, print, a print preview. I'm going to choose our print. Make sure it's linked to uh, our report control as we do. Now, I don't think we're going to have time today, so I won't show it, but um, okay, so that's that. Uh, let's have a print. I didn't do much. I'll try the print in version 19. This is uh, the code job. Uh... Oh, sorry. Bad example. I've chose the. I think I chose the wrong t uh, the wrong print button. Um, let me choose the. Uh... That one, yeah. The other one was the equivalent of a, a record print the record, like a view record or an insert change delete. So uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, that's better print. 
I'm going to show a printer dialog. We're going to print it in landscape. Yep, that's OK. We've got some, we can put headings and footings in there, as you would expect, and so on. <clears throat> so now we've got that. We've uh, we've resorted it. So we've said, OK, we want it in that, followed by, oops, sorry, followed by that. And we need that outstanding balance to be the first one, because that's a really important tool. So, and so can I have a print of that? And of course, don't forget they could save that. So you could allow them to to save them uh, and bring them back as uh, as different things. Maybe even build up a little uh, drop down list of uh, of uh, previous uh, previous uh, formats, if you will, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. So let's have a print of that. Um, print to PDF. I'll do. Du -du -du -du. Temp. See, I've used that before. I'm going to just open my documents. There we go. Let's just bring that in for people to see. And there's PDF. Of the report that we just wanted. I didn't put editors and footers, but of course you can do that with page of page, date, time, things like that. Usual things. So in, in one file swoop there, we've just given the user one hell of a data mining uh, uh, tool. I won't have time to demonstrate today, but what um, I would also do, and I have done in some of my systems, is um, you've got um, you've got this, and they go, yeah, I concur. Hang on a second, six hundred and fifty-one dollars. Uh, sorry, that sorry, no. Uh, for the net, six hundred eighty-seven. That's quite a lot. Uh, I, what I allow them to do is uh, double click. I trap the double click on that, and then I add the uh, the transaction lines. So I add the child row, which turns this into a, a mini tree. So this just this one row would have a tree structure on it, which would expand to show just the lines what made up that nine hundred eighty-seven. So they can see straight away. Ah, yes, I concur. Yeah, that, that, that's what it was made up of, that kind of thing. So you can mine. And of course, if you wanted to, you could allow them to then um, uh, mine even further. So they could go, OK, that's the transaction line. Can you show me the actual raw products? Uh, what made up because maybe it's a a, a a manufactured part and you want to make uh, the raw products what made that part like a parts list if you will so you could double click on one of those roles and you could have any number of child grandchild great grandchild roles uh, as you see fit so you're really giving your users there a lot of power as much power as you are comfortable giving them and and, and as they you know as they require i suppose so uh, a question from uh, uh, from Greg. Uh, if you have filters uh, when they print two, yes, yep. So if I was to, um, like for, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm going to take, oh, I'll leave that in, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to filter. So I'm going to put a filter in place and I'm going to say, um, no, not that. In fact, I do want the, <laughs> bring that down. I want that in there so I can filter on BBC. Okay, so there's my BBC list with my totals, so on and so forth. Let's have a print of that. So yes, into there. Temp. You've got a print preview as well. So let's have a print of that. Only three pages this time. Open it up, and there we go. And we're just looking at just the BBCs. So, so yeah. And basically, the print is a, a what you see, what you get. So if I was to rearrange these and so on and so forth, print. The print the rearranged. It's literally as you as you see it there. In fact, interesting. <laughs> you can see in that print that I had the filter row highlighted in orange. Well, uh, whatever colour that comes across in uh, with the BBC. So we can see there's a filter of BBC in there and so on. <coughs> okay. Um, no other questions. So that's good. We're going well. And we're all right, we've got another what, 20 minutes or so. Uh, so now, uh, a chart. Let's tie that in to a, a chart. This is something brand new. Some of this, what you're seeing, is, is brand new as well. We'll do it on the same procedure. OK, so let's make that a little smaller. And let's I suppose we can make that a little bigger, actually. OK, so I've added the global extension already. So our charting is available to us. There's my chart control. So I'm going to put that in here. 
Okay. Uh, yep, that, that's big enough. That's fine. Uh, I'm not going to do anything to the chart uh, at all. And I was going to go to my report control. If you want to. Definitely, I don't normally get this flashing. It's got to do the, uh, the go to meeting. But you've now got a, a new tab uh, where we go across. And we've got Chart Pro. And we want to link it to a chart control. So I'm going to link it to that chart control. There it is. And you've got a content type. Now, currently, it's on grand totals. I want it to be able to chart the group totals. And I'll probably prompt for a layer. So it would make sense that you only do the highest layer, if you will, uh, of the group totals. So if you are ungrouped by period and then customer, you really only get the, the, the period ones. Because the furthest down you, you, you start grouping, you're going to get maybe too much information being charted. The chart control will handle it, not a problem. It's just, would you use to actually get any benefit from that chart? That's ultimately what you're pointless giving them that, a particular tool where they can't, the whole point of a chart is to get a snapshot of information immediately. And if you give them too much where they can't see the wood for the trees, you've lost the, you've lost the point of doing the chart in the first place. So, but I have to say, I wanted that working by this afternoon's webinar and I struggled because the totals are, are all the group totals, not the grand totals. The group totals are auto calculated and it looks bad by the control and it looks like I can't get to them. So I'm doing a bit of playing about, but at the moment I am struggling. So we shall see. Uh, but you're going to be able to do it straight from a column data. Now, for those who are familiar with the charting, just let me two seconds bring the. I'll tell you what, we'll finish this. So we'll say grand totals. Uh, so all we've done is Chart Pro, link to chart. <clears throat> Into there, and there's our chart. There's our grand totals. There's our totals going across. Hopefully there, yep, 35,000, 35. I've not done any formatting and, and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, that's our, that's our particular total. And we could uh, do a filter. So now let's come down and say, we want it by period, uh, but we only want to include the BBCs. So now we're looking at just the BBCs because there's our totals have changed. So our chart changes immediately as well. And again, apart from obviously we set, uh, we, we have got some code in there now to set that, that period, but that's the only code we've put in. We've done nothing for the, uh, the charting. We've done nothing for the grouping, totaling, so on and so forth. So purposely trying to keep it simple really you want the truth uh fast and simple that's the idea but maximum power uh, to yourself um there's a couple of uh, extra settings to go into the chart so what i was going to mention is uh, just let me bring up the chart it won't be one second <clears throat> i've got so many windows open here so the charting uh it's fast it's it's uh, it's, it's very nice oh my dear using the old 16 free one really Just let me register that version. Don't even think I've got it registered. Yeah. It can use any of them. It's just what that example. I've just uh, I've just grabbed it uh, just in case we needed to call upon it today. So let me just bring that in. So you, you, your charts, you've got lots of different styles. Uh, and so, so you can you can display lots of information in any style style you like. It's a bit, uh, yeah, it probably means something to someone. someone. <laughs> um, but the usual, as you would expect, the bars, the lines, pie charts, you know, funnels, pyramids, all the usual things, and so on. And these are extremely fast. Uh, you can bind these straight to a queue. So, for example, uh, here, they are a queue, and all that does is regenerate a clarion queue. It doesn't tell the chart to do anything. And as fast as you can generate the data, it will plot it and chart it. So, and of course, what I would normally do for the user in our example here, so let's go back to ours, let's have that up there. I would have uh, some buttons down here, radio buttons to say, how do you want to see that data? And you can just switch it. So for example, um, yeah, something like that. So I would, okay, okay, I want to see it in a bar, I want to see it in line, an area, pie, and so on. So I would give the user, and that's just one call, 
just a method call to say, I need to see it in the bar, please. Um, and the data load is you're not reloading anything. You're just basically repainting it and so on. Uh, and of course you can print and save those as you would expect as well. Uh, and even control the, uh, the, uh, the image resolution of the prints, should you be doing them on a report, that kind of thing. So, um, we are close. Yeah, we are, we, are, we are close to it. What I was going to demonstrate earlier was, um, if I was going to my examples here, um, the chart pro is one of, what I would normally do, but I just didn't get time to finish this before uh, before the webinar. But yeah, basically that's, I wouldn't have the tabs, but you can see that that data is coming straight from that, just like you see in the, in the background and so on. Uh, these are the key default colors, but of course you, you 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 change whatever color theme you like. There are um, let's just close that. There's various different color themes you can uh, you can built into it. So we can say okay, we need it to be a black background with uh, office type colors, uh, pastel colors. There's quite a few, as you can see there. Okay, it says vibrant, it meant it, tropical. So anything you like. So there's quite a lot uh, built into it and it's getting stronger. And I think version 19 has the uh, 3D charts back in there as well, um, are starting to be in reintroduced, which is which are nice. Uh, but what I was going to say is <clears throat> what you could do to your users is put, them on, put a, a chart on a, a sheet, sorry, on a tab, have the report control on the second tab, just like you've got here, uh, but don't show the user the tabs, just show them the chart and then they go, okay, yeah, that's great. Double click, trap the double click and take them into the report control. So they basically, they, and you could even detect where you've, you've clicked. So you can detect that you've clicked on net or you've clicked on tax and take them to a report control, which shows just what's made up of that tax. You know, or what makes up that tax or what makes up that uh, total. So then using the power of the report control, more, more, more filtered, of course, uh, as a data mining tool to the chart so yeah basically the, you trap the double click you could just switch simply switch the tab uh, and just show them the information and have a back button to take them back which is my example which i planned to, as the example for today uh we all know how to switch a tab it's uh, there's no rocket science in that but um what i'll probably do before this goes uh, out into the demo app is show you that example but another report control so I can double click on net and I just get just what's made up of that net and so on, how, how it's made up, the net values, that kind of thing. Any any questions, any ideas? Then we are open to, uh, to all ideas, questions, so on and so forth. I see nothing. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> Is anyone still there? <laughs> so, okay, well, um, yeah, I hopefully you see the YouTube. Yeah. I suppose actually, yeah, you know. We have low, a, like no code is, is amazing how fast you can get something up just to show it off. You know, if you have the data, why not, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's all about getting the getting the data in there. And then using the the power of the controls to uh, let the user do what they want to do it. So you know, rethought it, refilter, so on and so forth. So, okay, I'm I'm here. I want that filter only show me the Clarion magazine. That's that. And you go back to the chart. That's all been replotted accordingly. So 1067, which of course 1067. Let's change that to uh, Formula One 847. Dink 847. You know, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's 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 giving the user a lot of uh, a lot of power there will be uh, on the uh, on the data source <coughs> uh, not the data source sorry the uh, the grouping uh, content there will be the ability to uh, chart it straight to the records so example here here's a chart connected to a clarion list so as you go up and down a new record obviously the the chart changes accordingly and there will be that so you'll be able to say okay uh, maybe you, I know in this example, that record has 12 balances, January to December. So you'll have that equivalent. So you can say, take the data from the, uh, from, from basically uh, from the record. And there'll be a, an extra option on there to say this is chartable data. 
you know, on the uh, on the column data, just like we turned on totaling uh, for grand totals and group totals, there'll be a tick on there to say this is chartable data at the content level, uh, sorry, at the row content level. Um, so I'll make it again. It will be uh, no code. That's the, that's the, the, the general direction we're trying to go. So um, I'm just trying to think of other enhancements. There's, there's obviously been there's so much uh, some. You know, I'm just trying to take a look. There's various different, uh, there's some fixes, enhancements, so on and so forth. The big here is um, the ability that you can now, uh, basically, it will define the views for you. So there's no, uh, I mean, the Clarion browser have totally eliminated the requirement for any kind of list or Clarion browser. You can just put the data straight in it or write the, you know, straight for the data source and it will say, okay, I need this view. It will write the view for you and uh, and get the data accordingly. So yeah, we try to make it really simple. Um, one of the other options, uh, it's not really report control, but I can mention is our update to the chill cap. I don't know if anyone wants to know about that. Um, it gets updates on a literally on a weekly basis, a daily basis, but it doesn't get released. But um, the chill cap wrapper has uh, again has had a lot of love of late, and that as well as including. Uh, all our uh, our um, enhancements to the base classes. We've also just added uh, task classes for pay simple. Uh, you've now got um, uh, my, uh, MYOB accounting, which is an Australian and New Zealand accounting system. So you've got um, interfaces into MYOB and Zero and QuickBooks Online. Uh, you can so you can set up payments and take payments uh, via the pay simple. <clears throat> Still got to do some work on the PayPal one uh, and so on, but the pay simple there and is active and it's actually going into a system um, as of yesterday, which is nice. Uh, you can talk to Google Calendar, uh, Google Tasks, Dropbox, those types of things. Uh, there's, there's quite a lot, you know, easy post, uh, spam checking, which we cover in the training next week, Monday, Tuesday, we'll be covering these things. So, uh, so that'll be an exciting time for them. Okay, any other questions? I don't see any on, let's see, Claren Live. Don't see any there. Let's see, do we see any on the um, web uh, cast, the YouTube? I see five are watching, but there's no comments there. Okay. No. Okay. One thing I've got to mention, actually, um, and because it's not, <laughs> it's live, but it's not fully live. It's live from an operational point of view, but some of the content is changing. Uh, is um, the website, uh, especially coming up to CIDC, we are uh, doing uh, some promotions uh, for, as I mentioned earlier. If we just open up, let me just go into it. Where are we? Let's bring it open. CIDC. Goodies, there you go. So we are running these offers, and this this is a uh, it, it's part of a plug. But by the same token, now is the time. If you're going to do anything, now is the time. Obviously, it's just it's just common sense. If you you, you go into some kind of show, uh, you, now is now is the time to take advantage of the offers. So we are running these a 25% off uh, new product purchases, a 10% off your active plan renewals. Uh, up to maximum of two years. I don't want you updating, buying a 10-year plan and, and so on and so forth. That's a bit extreme. But we'll give 10% off uh, uh, plan renewals and an amnesty for anybody who's um, lapsed and just wants to make sure that they're up to date, ready for the training, which I it stands to, it's a bit of an obvious uh, statement. But if you're going to pay for the training and you want to make use of all these new tools that you're seeing, you're gonna be, you need to be on the latest version. It's kind of obvious. So to help us mainly internally, We've just uh, launched a, a new website. Uh, we've got to change some of the the the, the waffle, if you will. Um, you know, it's got some generic, uh, not generic, but it's got some some wording on there. But I want to sit down uh, and and go through this. But I needed it live, mainly for the store, uh, for the coupons. So we've got the coupons. How are you going to get these offers? It'll make it easier for us uh, while we're there. So here's the new website. 
for existing members who want to uh, be able to uh, get to their downloads and so on and so forth, then we've got portal. That'll take you to the customer portal, which is still at the moment looks like the uh, the old one. It's it's cut down a little, but that uh, just looks like the old one. You would log in in the normal fashion. Oh, of course it helps if you uh, type in the the password. Uh, you would log in in the normal fashion, and um, yeah, do the products and, and, and details as you would expect. So nothing new there. <laughs> well, it, it's a look and feel that you're all used to, so that's good. But the new thing is it's a store. So now to get any of our products, because um, they're at the, you, you've got a Clarion page, you've got some of our uh, uh, the products on there and so on and so forth, and we've just got to put the links in place. But the main thing you'll want is to go via the store. And now we've got a new uh, Niantic store. You've got your settings, uh, sorry, all the different uh, elements and so on and so forth. And say for the code job, we can go to the uh, the bundle or any of the particular individual products. So it's nice and uh, nice and simple to navigate. Um, go onto there, and you would have your 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 particular options. And uh, we can send media out now, not that people would, you want an instant download as, as you would expect. But it's the usual, it's a cart, it's actually running uh, a Bante cart, which uh, I've got to admit is it's pretty nice to be fair. Yeah, it's uh, it works really well. And it's got an API, so we'll be uh, we'll be having a, our members area, our members portal, talking directly to the uh, Abante cart via the API, which the API will be done via the Chillcat wrapper, which means you, you guys will all get it, uh, a free upgrade. Uh, but you now have coupons. So this is where you would be able to use your coupons. And the coupons are, um, everyone wants to make a, a note. Where are we? For the 25% off new purchases, the coupon is CIDC-25. Just gonna put it in tech notepad here. Um, so it's CIDC-25 for uh, new purchases. <clears throat> that's 25 percent for active plan renewals it's active 10 and that's a 10 percent and for the lapsed uh, amnesty it's lapsed okay and that's well technically it's a 35 percent saving because that would be the, uh, the the penalty you pay if you lapsed and you renew some people do that they they go two three four years and then and then catch up all at once so they you know it's, it's whatever's cost effective to uh, to use i i'm happy either way i'll be honest with you so um <clears throat> ah and bill just asked do we have the copy paste serial number fixed uh is it, or is it just my computer I, now bill what he's referring to there is is um, in here in the portal and it's to do with that product and uh, it, when you go to download it puts the uh, serial number oh my days just thought I was streaming them uh, puts the serial number um, better blank that out for the recording uh, into the um, into the clipboard and the answer is no but we are going to change a, uh, the the script code, uh, what we're using for that to put it in there. So it's it's on the it's on the list. It's not a particularly high priority, I've got to admit, Bill, but it's on the list. <clears throat> Actually, what I'll do is I'll I'll deaden all those uh, those serial numbers I've just thought. So I'll regenerate and and I'll kill all those ones so that they're not valid anymore. Um, that's really it. Any any questions on on that? No, nope, looks all good then. So, uh, Arnold, what should we do? Should we start to wrap it up? We should wrap it up. Okay, okay. Because John's not here, so we can finish. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so if there's no questions, we're wrapping it up. We'll just do it from there. Uh, uh, Andy, thank you for uh, doing your little tease for the 
for the coming week. And um, hopefully everybody that is either going to be in Orlando or online will take advantage of the um, oh, that's the thing. specials. What we should be doing. What we should be doing. I'm just going to say, uh, let's see if it runs. Uh, of course, this might really come back to bite me. Um, but we're going to be building uh -oh. not, not necessarily this uh, app, but it's going to be it's going to be very close to it. A uh, different colour theme. Just trying to run it. Let's have a look. Has it got all the controls registered? No, it hasn't. Okay. I was going to actually show what we'll be creating, but during the training um over the two days monday tuesday we're gonna we're gonna cover uh, a range of the products which of course is, is the whole point at uh, we're not going to do the little nitty-gritty commands and so on and so forth because you can you can attend a monday webinar or you can email us uh, and so on uh, for those type of little commands what we want to do is show more of what we've done today so getting all of the controls uh, really working effectively together just like we've seen the report control and the chart pro together we're going to see the command bars and the task panel and the property grid and uh what goes in the property grid i think we put a date picker in there and, a, uh, and so on so we're going to uh, the property grid in a command bar so you're going to see all these things starting to come together uh, in the training so that's that's the monday we cover a, a lot of that and showing how, how to really get the controls working together. The Tuesday, we cover that same application, but we introduce comms to it, so which is really, really good. We do some uh, spam checking, so we, we create an email, and then we actually submit it for spam scoring to see if it's likely to be uh, passed or not. Uh, we have our calendar synchronizing to the Google Calendar. Uh, we place, we have our, an order system and then we go and place the order for delivery and we actually book it via a, 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 a delivery system uh, and so on. So it's all the API work and we show, uh, we show lots of the API work, but again, really nice and simple, letting you demonstrate how to take some curl commands and turn them into the commands you need for the Chillcat. So really nice and simple, uh, but very powerful. So that's the two days. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. I really do. There you go. Oops. So, um, okay, we already answered that question, so we're good. Yeah, let's call it, uh, wrap it up then. Okie dokie, cool. Okay, so uh, again, next week, no webinar and the week after, but we will have a roundup the, in uh, first Friday in October. And um, looking forward to seeing you guys there who are there and uh, for those guys online, thank you for joining in. Anybody, you can still sign up, Just sign up. I know you, you were taking my cue on signing up at the last moment and paying the highest price, which is, which is fine. <laughs> anyway. I I do recommend it. You know, I mean, it's not just a, a plug. It's. I think somebody asked this morning uh, on the news groups about um, uh, some Niantic training. How do you get started and so on? And the training is a perfect fit for them. Um, they can always attend the Monday webinars and so on. And, uh, but you're not going to cover the same detail we're going to cover on the training, a whole day's training and so on. You know, we're not going to cover that in in a one Monday webinar or two Monday webinars or and so on and so forth. So they want to leave with the power out of their product. And Bruce, I, I, I went to, I did reply and just say, you know, we've got these resources available. But Bruce uh, did one of the uh, the best replies, the best funniest posts I think I've seen for a long time. It's on the uh, I think it's on the third party news group. Uh, but he, but the point he was making is the the what you'll pay for the training and you're getting both Niantic training and the Cape Soft training, which is second to none. You know you're getting it's a no brainer. It, it really is. It's an absolute no brainer. If you've got those products and you really want to lever the most out of your purchase because you've already done the bulk of the the investment you've got them um the training is uh, is your next step it's a logical step exactly all righty then cool thank well, you uh, uh, thank you uh, everybody for attending hopefully you you like what you saw and you've got the you've got the control you can you know get some use out of it and, and so on and so forth and uh, that's the whole idea okay cool everybody have a great weekend Andy, take care of that throat and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and don't cough in, that. Uh, see you in yeah. uh, 10 days. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we get in on the or Saturday. Le or less, or less. So Yes, um, yeah. 
So we get in a week tomorrow. So I'll probably uh, I'll drop you a Skype, see where you are, and um, yeah, take it from there. Yes. Okay. See you at Disney. Bye. Oh, cheers. Thank you. Bye. <coughs> take care. <laughs> oh, do you need to stop it?